So what we are seeing is a pneumonia, in particular a kind of pneumonia which is called interstitial pneumonia that produces much dyspnea. Dyspnea it means that you've got a short in breath, you are difficult to breathe while doing everyday activity. This is due because uh, the place where the infection is, is between where the alveoli and uh, the vascular of the lung because of the fact that in this situation it's difficult from oxygen to enter in the blood and uh, carbon hydroxide to get outside in air. And so this is why this disease is particularly stressful for the patients because uh, there's very little oxygen in the blood. Actually, the major, main age that we are following is older people. We've got very, very few pediatric cases. Most of the cases are people above the age of 40, and actually the greatest age group is people above the age of 50. In particular, male patients appear to be more uh, at risk rather than female. Whenever we see a patient with interstitial pneumonia that is uh, caused by SARS-CoV-2, this is the name of the virus, it's not that easy to understand who are the patients who will do good or who will do bad. Because actually we've got quite limited uh, indication in order to forecast what the clinical evolution of this patient will be. And so this is a part of the difficulty in management of these patients. It's not easy to understand who will the patient who will do, go, do worse. And so we need to have content monitoring of this patient because apparently we admit patients that, that seems to be quite uh, stable, but in very few hours uh, they may develop uh, uh, in respiratory insufficiency and they need to go into intensive care unit. It is luckily a small proportion, but uh, uh, it really depends on uh, the vulnerability of the patients. And so, so far, actually, we know that only a minority of these patients. We need to treat this patient well since the very beginning. We are trying to use also antiviral uh, drugs, uh, drugs that may have antiviral activities. And so, in particular, uh, as soon as the case is confirmed, we are using drugs that uh, we generally have been used in uh, HIV infection, that is protein inhibitors, together with hydroxychloroquine. And as soon as the patient is, uh, uh, is of course, uh, these drugs are off-label because they are not registered for uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection, but there are clinical trials that are uh, working in order to address its benefit. We started this epidemic 10 days ago. But nevertheless, in the past 10 days, and we've been following approximately 30 patients, okay, but what I want to stress is that in the past 10 days, all our activity totally changed. This is the experience in Italy in which the epidemic started two weeks ago. I think that Italian and Canadian health system have got many similarities. And so please take advantage of what has been the the epidemic evolution in our country in order to forecast what presumably may happen in your country. And so first of all, think that the first case has been in a hospital and this patient was not recognized for four or five days having SARS-CoV-2 because of the fact that contemporary he had a severe bacterial pneumonia. And so first message to say is that most of the time, let me say very frequently, SARS-CoV infection 2 is associated with bacterial pneumonia. In the Italian situation, the case zero was a person that had contact with China, but he was totally asymptomatic. And so sometimes it's so difficult to identify the case zero. But the case one should not be missed because he will be a patient who is admitted in the hospital with uh, severe pneumonia. And so please, in this situation, test as much as you can. And so we need to work, and this is the message for Canada, do all what you can to identify the very first cases, because in this situation, the isolation procedure will work most. With regard to death rate, we are still in a, in a situation in which the death rate is approximately 2%. And so it's not huge, 
but the burden of this disease with regard of the way in which has changed the lives of people is already very huge and the burden of economic consequence is really huge and so again of course we need to avoid the death but we also need to avoid infection because of the impact is really big one tool that we thought was very useful is to build an electronic chart that uh, communicate between uh, the territory and the hospital but also that is in the hands of the patients that will be in quarantine. And so people who are in quarantine may be very much stressed. They may be, they feel alone. The doctor are not going to visit them in most of the case because there's not enough. And so actually what we do is try to empower them to write us in an electronic chart on the web what they're condition, what the fever, what the respiratory rate, what is the respiratory distress, so that to understand which are the danger signs that will require, for instance, hospitalization. And so I think very important is to be prepared also with a telemedicine approach. Why the population get crazy? All the people want to seek to be tested. Any kind of fever is going to the hospital. That's no good, it's wrong, it's dangerous. Actually, this epidemic started uh, 10, 12 days ago in my hospital, but uh, we live here. We've got very few hours to go home every day because we need to be uh, working, let me say, 18 hour day. Of course, uh, it's difficult to sustain in the long term, but we can even think that this will not be a short epidemic. I'm living most of my time in the hospital. That's the issue. But let me say this is something personal. Of course, this has been something very stressful, but I'm also very proud to be working in this situation because of the fact actually we are in front line. We know that if we are quiet, we understand what we are doing. We try to give clear message. Well, it's also a big honor to me to work in this situation and be in touch with people, try to relieve their problem and try to make them understand that this situation can be controlled. Most of the time it is a severe disease, but it's not a deadly disease. We can cope with this disease. We now must not get into panic. And so it's very important to be present here to give clear message, people must not be afraid. They will change their way of living for a while, okay, but give a message that is for sure that we will cope with this epidemic.